video on doing a static timing check at a couple different places, even before you start the car, how to go about it, uh, how to kind of confirm what you've got going on before you even fire up your car. So what, what I mean by static timing is that the numbers in your timing table match what is actually showing up on the balancer, okay? So if you have an LS, you're going to have to find top dead center and make a timing pointer. If you've got a small block forward or a small block Chevrolet, a big block Chevrolet, you already know all about this. So there's plenty of videos out there on how to find top dead center with an LS, how to make a timing pointer and whatnot. So I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to show you how to go through it in the software. Then we're going to do it on a couple different ways uh, on my own personal car. I just got done putting a new camshaft in. I had the whole front of the engine apart. So it's time to recheck static timing. So what I typically do is I change, I unplug the injectors. So that's step one. I unplug the injector so that this thing doesn't try to start. And I set my cranking timing somewhere where I have a mark on my balancer. So we're about to show you that, but what you have to understand here is your cranking parameters, it stays this locked amount of timing before or until it hits 400 RPM. If it doesn't have any fuel, it's never going to light off and it's not going to go into your base timing table with all of your modifiers and whatnot. So I like to do this before I even start the car, just to confirm I didn't miss something or screw something up when I was putting something back together. So uh, <clears throat> this is typically at 15 degrees on, on my car, but on my balancer, I've got a mark at 30 degrees. So I move this to 30 degrees, and then I also move this to zero degrees because I have a mark on my balancer at uh, top dead center as well. So let's get to showing you on the car and then showing you kind of how to use it. What uh, timing light that I've had success with over the years, uh, it's actually very cheap and, uh, and how to do it. So let's go look at underneath the hood of the car. All right, so we're under the hood of the car. Here's a timing light that I've used with uh, smart coils for years. Uh, this right here, CP7527. Um, it's Actron. It's from like Advanced Auto Zone, whatever, one of those places they have them. Um, I've always explained that if you have smart coils, you need to have a dumb timing light. They just seem to be a lot more consistent. So if you don't know how to use a timing light, it needs power and ground. That's what these little clamps are for. Here, right here. All right, so you just hook it up to your battery, or if you've got a spare battery, set it on the floor and hook it up to your spare battery. And then we're on cylinder number one. So just throw the clamp around here. And what we're looking for, <clears throat> kind of hard to see because we're way down in there, but you see that red line? That's at 30 degrees before top dead center. So remember in the software, we set it to 30 degrees. And when I run this thing over, the light, when I turn this thing over with the starter, it should flash at 30 degrees. So uh, then when we move it, we're gonna move it back down to zero. We'll check the same thing. So you should have some marks on your balancer to confirm your static timing. So whatever you have to do, if you, you, know, if you rig up a, a timing pointer, use a degree wheel on, on, your, um, on your balancer, and then mark your balancer. Typically, if you're gonna mark it, I prefer to do them every 90 degrees so you can check uh, to make sure that every cylinder is firing when it's supposed to. So for this video though, we're going to fire it off. We're going to turn it over at 30 degrees and see if we can't watch something happen here. So I've never used this camera in this type of situation. So, right. so hopefully you all can see that. I think that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the starter and I'm going to press the power button on the uh, right there, press that little button. And we're going to see if we got some light. Here we go. All right, so that was on the money. 
So let's go back over to the computer and see if we were off how to make those adjustments. Be right back. All right, so we got it to fire off at 30 degrees, but if we were off, what we need to do is offset timing, right? So what you would do is go into your ignition type, configure. This is a, a 12 minus one wheel that I have in here, and it's offset by uh, negative eight degrees. Okay. So this is a different video to show you how to set this up, but it's very similar to a 36 minus one. Um, you know, you just choose type of 12 minus one and then uh, what, what tooth number you are. So if you were off by four degrees here while cranking, you can offset it here. Now cranking is literally, I use cranking literally just to get me in the ballpark because once you fire it up, it could drift a little bit and you're more concerned about what the timing is at RPM, you know, at a few, hundred, a few thousand RPM. So what we're going to do is this is where you would make your adjustments, right? So you can either subtract or add um, a timing number here for reference. But now that we know we're, we're spot on at idle, uh, I'm going to fire, or I'm sorry, spot on at cranking. I'm going to fire it up. We're going to get this thing to, uh, to idle. And then we're going to uh, shoot the balancer again while it's idling. And then we're going to free rev it a few times and confirm inductive delay is correct. So let me open up some doors in the garage and I'll fire this thing off. Hang on a sec. Alright, it's a little loud in there, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the camera up. I'm going to show you uh, while, we, while we're checking timing and, and why it's bouncing around. I'm going to explain to you once I you know, shut the car off uh, how to actually do a, a real static timing check. So a lot of you guys will fire up your car put a timing light on it and it moves all over the place you don't understand why so i want to show you this in a video and show you how to fix it um, so you can actually check so this car is a little loud uh, my eyes are burning a little bit so just kind of bear with me and i'm going to show you here on video so you won't be able to hear me talk but you'll be able to at least see In that last part of the video where we had the car running, uh, we noticed that the balancer was showing timing numbers kind of scattered all over the place at idle. So there's a few reasons why you'll see that if you do not enable a static timing check. I get a lot of you know messages and questions about this as to why does this thing show me crazy numbers at idle. Uh, I'm going to show you why. I, I prefer to show you guys the wrong way first and then the right way so that you most people learn a little bit better from their mistakes. So uh, we did this intentionally to show you it bouncing all over the place. And here's why. So here's your, here's your timing table, right? Here's your base spark table. And there's values all over the place in here. So we're not, as it's moving around from cell to cell, it's going to start moving around. The second contributing factor is idle spark. So if idle spark is enabled, it's going to either add or remove timing to try to keep with this desired idle speed RPM. So you're going to see large swings typically up to eight degrees uh, positive or negative in order to try to hunt this this value, right? And then with my car, I have an advanced table doing a little bit something else to it at idle, but that's why we saw some pretty big swings. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves away from all those those modifiers, right? So here, your, your idle spark, uh, another spot that you'll have a modifier, this car doesn't, but timing versus coolant temp or timing versus manifold air temp. If this is at, uh, you know, minus 14 degrees here, it's going to offset and, and move around and based off of actual coolant temp or manifold air temp. So 
What we're going to do is we're going to get away from all of that. We're going to enable a, st a static timing check. So a static timing check is in this sync drop down. So if you click on this arrow, you'll see enable static timing check, but it's not highlighted. The reason being is we're not online. So click USB link. All right. We're going to send the ECU. Okay. And then here, we're going to go to enable static timing check. So this value, when you key this in, this is how much timing the engine is going to have and disregard everything that we just showed you, okay? So everything you just saw is going to be disregarded. It's just going to follow this value. I'm going to put a value of 30 degrees in here because I've got a good solid mark on my balancer. And uh, I'm going to do this once the car has actually been uh, fired up, but you'll see here in a second, because I'd like it to crank on, on 15 degrees, it just turns over a little bit easier. Um, so once the car's fired up, we're going to hit this set button, and it's going to lock it down to 30 degrees. So uh, let's go fire up the car and see what we got. So you saw we had a uh, static timing value of 30 degrees. It was rock solid at 30 degrees on the balancer. Uh, the second part of that when it was running, you, you notice that it, it came off of 30 degrees, and that's because I came over here and I cleared it on the laptop. Uh, so once you clear your static timing value here, right, clear, it'll tell you the static timing has been cleared. You can close this out, and it reverts back to this. Okay, it reverts back to this, all your modifiers, all your idle spark modifiers, any advanced tables you have, it, idle, it, it reverts all back to that. So that's how you check static timing. Now, when you saw when I revved it up, it, um, it stayed at 30 degrees, and when I let off, it kind of blipped for a split second and then came back to 30 degrees. Uh, some of that has to do with the uh, inductive delay. So I'm going to post a a link to a pretty good explanation of inductive delay. Uh, it's, it's easier for me to just post that than it is to try to give everybody values because y'all will start messaging me saying, hey, I need a value for this because it moves by this and I, I don't want to just guess at it. I'd rather have y'all be able to read it. So inductive delay changes here. Um, so that's how you check static timing. So anytime you build something new, anytime you pull apart anything major on the engine, change a camshaft, uh, even if you move the pointer or something, just always redo this, right? So ch confirm top dead center, and then once you've confirmed top dead center, follow all these steps. You can obviously leave out the, the steps where I intentionally showed y'all how to not enable a static timing check, um, but you just follow these steps and you'll you'll have rock solid timing. Uh, again, it's th this is all based off of you inputting the correct information, finding top dead center on the engine, which is extremely important. Okay, you want the computer to match what's on the balancer. So just because the computer is telling this uh, the, the the engine that you want uh, whatever, say 32 degrees here or 28 degrees here doesn't mean it actually isn't off by two, four, six, or eight degrees. Um, some 24X and 58X engines, uh, LS engines, can be off by quite a bit in, in both positive and negative uh, values. So this is something that is pretty much a necessity on everything you're working with. 
Um, but remember, all these numbers in here, they're just a number, okay? The biggest thing, that if you're going to start tuning stuff, this is an alcohol combo. Uh, you know, if you're going to start tuning stuff that's big horsepower, turbo combo, blower, nitrous, whatever it is, the only thing that is actually going to give you the honest report of what is happening in that engine is the spark plug, okay? So uh, I should make a little video on how to read some spark plugs with, uh, with alcohol because that seems to be the, the hardest thing to understand, but no matter how advanced we get with engine management systems and with turbo systems and fuel systems and all that, reading spark plugs is still king. So uh, if you're at a racetrack and you don't really know how to read spark plugs, find a guy with a nitrous carbureted combo who's over 35, and uh, good chances are they're going to know very well how to read spark plugs because they've probably grenaded a lot of engines and uh, read a lot of spark plugs. So uh, before everybody kind of snobs off on the guys with the carburetors and nitrous, remember they're, they know some stuff that you may not. So um, again, reading plugs is still king. It doesn't really matter what you key in here. The spark plug is what tells you the story. So that's all I got. I'm not going to really get into how much timing you should put here and there and yada yada on your combo because without reading the plug, I can't give you an honest answer. So have a good one, guys.